Hi there, I'm Dr. Erica Cologne, and today we're going to break down a unit of the Nitty Gritty Science curriculum so you can see all the resources available, both print and digital, that you can use with your students throughout the school year. All units are set up the exact same way in Earth, Life, and Physical, so let's get started. All right, you've opened the curriculum and it is going to be sorted by units and you're going to choose the unit you're teaching and it's going to look like this. This unit is for forces that shape the earth and the earth science. Now all the units are going to be set up the exact same way. They're going to be numbered and because I've moved them over to Google Drive you can see that the numbers are out of order because Google Drive puts folders first then the PDFs but typically move in the numbered order. So when we start we're going to go ahead and start with zero. This is going to take us to our pacing guide. Now, uh, the pacing guide is going to be based on a 50 minute class period, and it's going to tell you the activities that you're going to be doing each day. So day one, we're doing the teacher demo. We're also going to be doing uh, notes for the students on forces that shape your just for section one. And then we're going to also do the PowerPoint for section one and the interactive notebook activity and then continue that for day two. So once you have that, you want to go ahead and decide as the teacher. Do you want your students doing the traditional interactive notebook or the digital interactive notebook? So if they are going to do the traditional interactive notebook, they are going to open up file number one. This is the traditional interactive notebook that's a PDF and you print the pages you need. Now because this is again hosted on Google Drive, this is not the actual font. You will see that the font will be different on your file, but you're going to scroll down until you get to the activity of section one. So it's going to show you that these are the notes that you have for the input side of the interactive notebook and this is what the activity is going to look like for the output side for the students. So then there's going to be a page in there. This is the page that you would print for your student um, and this is what they're going to cut out. So you do not need to print all the pages in this file. And then following every interactive notebook activity is this mini quiz. There's two to a page to save. This is what you're going to give the following day as kind of a bell ringer and a check. So once you print off this page, then we know you have the activity ready for the day. So before you can give your students the activity, of course, you need to go ahead and give them the notes. So we are going to go ahead and determine how you want to give the students your notes. Now I'm going to skip file number two because that is going with the digital interactive notebook. So we're going to come back to that. So let's see how we can do editable notes for your students. When you give editable notes, this version right here is going to be the notebook version that you are going to get. It's the same one that you see in the interactive notebook. And so you can decide here how guided you want to make the notes and we make it editable. So depending on the level of your students, you can take a lot of the information out and have them find that on their own, or you can just take a little bit of the information out. So that's why we don't make these guided notes for you. You determine on your students. So you can go ahead and just take out the definitions on these words, just like this, and you can make them guided notes how you want your students to fill in that information. So the next question I get is going to be, where are we going to get that information? So we have a couple options to get that. We can either do the PowerPoint, which is going to be right here. And when I open that PowerPoint, this PowerPoint is also editable. And so you can lecture along with the PowerPoint in section one. And while you're lecturing, the students can look at the information in the PowerPoint and fill out their notes. And then you just stop when you get to the end of section one, and then you save section two for the following day. So again, that PowerPoint is also available for you in that file number three. Now, because file number three is the editable resources, we also have put the editable uh, test in there as well. It's right here, which you're going to come back to at the end. And then we also have access to digital links in here. So this is where you might want to do the digital option for notes. Here we open this up. And if you want guided notes, you open this up, you make a copy for your students like you would and go ahead and share it on whatever platform you're using with the students. And then you can go ahead 
and give this to your students and it's going to be guided already. They just enter the text there to do their definitions and then that is done for them. You can also give them editable notes here. This is going to be um, on a blank sheet. They just type in what they want. And then of course we have the Google Docs for the PowerPoint and the Google Docs for the chapter test here if you would like to do it all digitally by the Google Docs forms. So now that we have the notes, the other way that you can go ahead and give the notes is have the students use the free digital textbook we have and I'm going to show you how you can get to that. So going back, we have a digital interactive notebook and in that file, you are going to see a link right here to the digital textbook. And you can go ahead and click on that and save this link for your students. They can go ahead and pick. So if we're in Earth Science textbook, of course, we're going to choose that online textbook. And then we're also going to break it down. The textbook is aligned directly with the Earth Science curriculum. So here, I'm in that forces that shape the earth unit. We're in section one. So I can click right to that section on the online textbook and it will open up. Now, if you don't want your students going to another web page in your classroom, there's also an option for print here at the bottom, which you can just print off a PDF and give that to them with the review questions at the end. All of the information in this PDF or on the web page right here, will give them what they need to answer the notes for section one. And that is where you get that. So you have the digital textbook to get the notes. You can do the PowerPoint. You have the guided notes. And that's all for the traditional interactive notebook. If you want to do the digital interactive notebook, then you're going to use the digital notebook access links. And here on the links, you have the student digital notebook or the teacher digital notebook. This, of course, has all the answers and everything is done here in the teacher. But let's take a look at the student digital notebook. When I get again, make a copy for my student, you are going to notice that it's going to open up and look very similar to the NGS traditional interactive notebook. Same cover. We have the page of this is if you want to edit it and add anything for your students to know and put a little uh, message if they have a quiz or a test coming up. We've given that option for you. But as you can see, the same concept map that was available in the traditional interactive notebook is also available here. And then the students go ahead and fill in the notes. Now with this, we have made the option here for the students to do everything independently here. So then instead of you using the PowerPoint to teach it, they can watch the PowerPoint here and fill in the notes. Uh, they also have access to the digital textbook. This digital textbook link will take them just directly to the section one notes only. And then, of course, on some pages, we give some further exploration. And because this is on yours, you can erase that or not before you send a copy out to your students. And so as you go through the digital interactive notebook, you will see that it's very similar to all the activities that we do in the traditional interactive notebook. And that is with that. So now um, in, in that one, we also look at reviews. So instead of doing the mini quiz in the traditional interactive notebook, you do a very quick look at quiz for the students, which the students seem to enjoy this game like review as well. So the links are there as, for the look at to do your mini quiz and just test where they are. Now we've done day one. We've done day two. I'm going to head back to that pacing guide. So we've done all the notes, the PowerPoint activities, the interactive notebook activities. So let's just say we've done that for day one and day two. Now we want to go ahead and break it up. So when I don't want to have four days of notes because we want the students to explore a little bit. This is our 5B model. So we're going to break up the notes with also a guided student lab. So you're always going to want to look in the file that has all the hands on engagement in there. And when we do that, we're going to go to file four. Now, I know you're saying, hey, you skipped that teacher demo. That is also going to be in this uh, file as well. So you have your demos, your guided lab, and all your science stations are going to be found in this file because this file is all the hands-on engagement. 
So there's going to be teacher guides, the station signage uh, for you, teacher guides, how to run the stations, how to do the demos. But here are going to be the PDFs that you're going to give your students. So here's going to be the typical demo. This would have been the demo you did on day one. And then down below is going to be the science lab. And here the students are doing a volcanic eruption on this. The materials are available. And all the labs are set up the exact same way. There's going to be a material list, procedures, part A, part B if possible. They're always going to collect either quantitative or qualitative data. And then they're going to go ahead and analyze and conclude. So that way you know that they're understanding what they're doing in their lab. So that's going to be day three, typically, if you're following the pacing guide. Then we have um, day four and five of our pacing guide. That's also going to take us back and do the section three notes and the interactive notebook activity section four notes. And then by the end of day five in this unit, the students should have been taught all the information that they need. Um, so they're going to go ahead and uh, have a teacher demo. They're going to have four days of notes and PowerPoint activity and lectures. They're going to be able to explore using that lab. And so all of the information that you want to give them, they should have now. And they should have a very solid concept of the material for forces that shape the earth. So now using the 5e model, we want the students to start applying more of what they know since they have that information and elaborate on it. Now we want to see things coming back in their own words. We want them showing us that they are learning and then they can kind of apply it to relevant situations um, and rele through relevant readings and calculations. And so that's where the stations come in. So we're going to now open up the stations. On the pacing guide, you will see that there is two days set up for science stations. So when you read the teacher guide, you will notice that I go ahead and explain that the uh, science stations have seven stations in them. One of those stations happens to be what is called the creation station, which is our STEM station. And so during the station time, which is about maybe a 12 minute station, when they're at that creation time, that is where they're typically brainstorming and designing and we're not actually ever testing or building during that time. We save day two to go ahead and build, test, design, whatever we need to, or build, test, and launch, that sort of thing, and do the challenges on day two with the entire class. So the first day with the stations is running through the stations, and then it's typically brainstorming in that creation station. And then day seven is really set aside to go ahead and do that really fun part of that STEM activity. So we're head back to, again, Remember, hands-on labs are in here with science stations, so we open up the science stations. When I open up the science stations, you're going to typically find seven stations. All of them are going to have a uh, quick um, article. The students are going to answer the questions as a group. They're going to have observation stations where they have relevant images with two questions each. So here you can see what I'm talking about where we have them elaborate. Here they're looking at this image as a group and it says identify two types of volcanic eruptions. So one, they already know that there's two types because we taught it in the notes earlier. And then now they're going to have to apply more of what they know and elaborate at that. So which type is shown here in this image above? So they're not only going to have to know what two types of volcanic eruptions there are, but they're also going to have to be like, okay, now I have to use more of my knowledge and decide which type is shown. And so that's where we're having them elaborate. We do a quick hands-on investigation station. This is not the STEM challenge station. This is just, again, having them engage in science and using either data or collecting data or doing um, something. And so here they're going to be using the Mercalli scale. We have a calculation station. We always want them applying math and science together. We have a communication station where we're having the students talk through and all of this is explained in that teacher guide. And then here is that creation station where they're going to create a model featuring movement along a normal reverse and slip strike fault. And so again, here is all the materials needed, what the requirements are of this challenge. So again, during day one of the stations, 
They are brainstorming with the group. They're coming up with some drafts of their ideas. And we reserve day two to do the challenge part of that. And then our final station is the imagination station where it's just kind of like a brain break activity. And then if they need to go back and finish their calculations or any questions on other sections, they can do that. So at the end of this, they have student answer sheets and they write in the section that matches the logo with the station they're at. And then at the end is also the answer key for you, which helps set up answers and any information you would need as the teacher. So that's found there. When we are done with the stations on those two days, the next choice that you need to um, understand is how to go ahead and review with your students. And so we, again, have print versions and digital versions of review. And so we have task cards, which are questions one per card. And then we also have a study guide. So you can use one or the other, or you can use them both. The study guide can be given as homework if you needed that throughout the unit. You can just give it as a typical study guide before the test. You can use the task cards as game-like review or Jeopardy review, or you can use the digital ones, which is on the Boom um, app. And you have all that information on how to go ahead and get that information and get your own free account. So then you are looking here. Here is your traditional task cards, which you just print and laminate for your students. You then have your digital task cards. So there's five, there's six. So there's your digital task cards here. Um, if the students need more review on that, there's also those instructional videos and digital quizzes. So it's the PowerPoint again. It's just narrated. And then there's going to be a little quiz after each of those sections. So if they need a little bit more to just review those PowerPoints, they can do it again. That's file number seven. And then finally, file number eight is going to be the study guide. And as always, we have a print and digital version available. So here, if they have the print version, they're going to open this. And you can see we're going through all of the information that they need in their study guide. If you prefer to give it digitally, then you can go ahead and have the link here. And that will also take you to make a copy, share it on whatever platform you are using in your classroom. If it cooperates right now during the video and you can see the students can go ahead and fill in that information. It's the exact same study guide and they just need to fill in the information um, that is needed. And then of course you have your chapter test, which again is in that editable file right here where you can go ahead and see the test. We make it editable in case you want to add more information or change things. So we have a multiple choice section in every test of the unit. So the students, um, they start understanding how we're teaching things. So we have the uh, multiple choice. We also are always going to have a fill in the blank. So the students start knowing that they need to know their vocabulary. They also have to interpret diagrams in there. And then there's always going to be two essays out of the three that I need to answer. So that is all to get them through. And by the end of going through all of these files in each unit, your students will definitely master the concepts that are found throughout the curriculum, which is based on the next generation science standards. So I hope that answers all of your questions. Um, you can always reach out to us, admin at nittygrittyscience.com, um, or just come over and see what else we offer with the curriculum and reach us at www.nittygrittyscience.com. Thanks for joining me today.